are back with the Car Project. I'm Sarah. And I'm Heather. Today we are on day nine of our 12-day journey through the Christmas story. Each day we are giving you a bite-sized little piece of the Christmas story uh, that coincides with our Hope Has Come cards. You can download these cards on our website. It is our hope that this will help bring the Christmas story to life this season for you and for your family. And today, day nine, Heather, we get to focus on this idea of peace on earth. Yeah. So where, where are we going in the Christmas story? Why don't we go right to the story of the shepherds? It's right in uh, Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. I'm just going to dive right into the Christmas story that we're reading for today just so that we can put, put ourselves in place mm -hmm. with, our, with our shepherds and hang out with them. And this is what it says. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their uh, flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So here we see our our terrified shepherds that all of a sudden are in the presence of angels. I mean, they're just they're just doing their job. They're out in the mm -hmm. middle of the dark. They're they're just doing their job, and they get shocked by not only the news are these angels coming and talking to them, but on top of it, they're learning that this long-awaited Messiah is going to be born in a humble ma manger not far away. But the surprises weren't over because right at the end of their announcement, not only is this Messiah going to be born, but peace on earth for whom His favor rests. And it's just this announcement that angels amplify right at the end of their their uh, their call to the shepherds. Yeah, I wonder how the shepherds would have heard that. Like, why why would that have been significant, or would that have stood out to them at that time? Yeah. You know, why is that detail included? No, and I love that because one of the things that we often like to ask from our car Bible study guide is a history question on when did the events take place, what was going on in history of that time. Mm -hmm. That might give us some color into why the how the shepherds would have heard this message. Yeah. Because if we understand the history of what was going on, it will will help us a little bit. And so here's the cool thing about what was happening in history around this time period. You know, Jesus was born around BC to four, uh, sorry, six BC to four BC, somewhere in that range. And we know those dates based on when King Herod was reigning, because he's the one that tried to kill Jesus at the end. Spoiler alert! At the end of the, the Christmas mm -hmm. story, uh, but that's how they're able to date when Jesus was born. So he's born right mm -hmm. um, right at the uh, 6 to 4 BC. Mm -hmm. So he's born during a time called Pax Romana. Mm -hmm. And this is referring to a time between 27 BC all the way to like 180 AD in the Roman Empire. It was under the rule of Augustus. And this Pax Romana meant Roman peace. It was a 200-year period where Rome actually saw this unprecedented peace and ec um, economic prosperity through the entire empire. Roman citizens had relatively uh, a lot of security. The government was generally maintained with law and order and stability. It also meant that there was little to no war in the Roman Empire during this time. It was a very rare time for the people in Rome. I was reading this article from uh, gotquestions.org mm -hmm. on, on this, Pax Romana, and it actually was interesting. It highlighted a few benefits that Christians later on um, had experienced after Jesus' death, um, experienced as they were really spreading the gospel. And there's two of them. One was that there was easier, safe in travel. This Pax Romana facilitated um, this by providing road systems connecting different towns. Yeah, and it yeah. made travel for these missionaries at that time you know, easier and um, including or increasing mobili mobility and the spread of the gospel. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then there's one other thing too. Um, it actually helped establish a common language. Um, Greek became a common language at that time used throughout the Roman Empire. Again, making it easier for people to tell and spread the fame of Jesus. Yeah. So this, I mean, this was a rare time in the Roman uh, Empire's history where you have this mm -hmm. peace that is spread throughout this 200 year period. Mm -hmm. And it's great. It just happens to be right around the time that not only before Jesus Jesus is born, but well after his death and, um, and resurrection, that it's during the time of the missionaries spreading Jesus's fame across the Roman Empire. So, yeah. um, you know, that's that's God's hand in, in, in the way that I'm looking at it. So a lot of good was happening from this Pax Romana. 
there's peace in the land during it, but the mm-hmm. absence of war doesn't necessarily guarantee that there is a presence of real peace, right? That's fair. We can relate to this because while we may experience peace within our own country and in our own mm-hmm. land, that doesn't necessarily mean that every individual is at peace in their life. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I think we can think about that a lot oftentimes during the Christmas season. Mm-hmm. Um, and people didn't really have peace during that time. Uh, let me do- read an excerpt from an NIV study Bible. We love our study Bibles because it just, just helps give a little bit of glimpse into what was yeah. happening in the history. This is from an NIV study Bible. It says this. The Roman world was experienced in the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, marked by external tranquility, but the angels proclaimed a deeper, more lasting peace than that, a peace of mind and soul made possible by the Savior. Peace with God is received by faith in Christ and is on the believers that his favor rests. So so beautiful, it this, is. this emphasis that the study Bible was making around the idea that while there may have been peace during this time, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were going to find their lasting peace until they understood who Jesus was and what he came to bring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so when the angels were singing to the shepherds in Luke 2, 14, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. This piece probably had a deeper meaning to the shepherds. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of this, the well-known prophecy, messianic prophecy in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 that we often maybe hear around Christmas time. But I want to go ahead and read that because it's so powerful this time of year. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mm. and um, of the greatest of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on david's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever man so i mean you have to imagine the shepherds are hearing this idea of peace from the angels Mm -hmm. makes me wonder whether or not this isaiah prophecy was in the back of their (laughs) mind whether or not they were educated enough to be able to know that but the idea that even in the foretelling of, of Christ coming, Isaiah is emphasizing this idea that there's going to be this Prince of Peace, that peace, there will be no end. And from that mm-hmm. time on and forever, he will reign. Like the, uh, Jesus was bringing this peace that is mm-hmm. so unfathomable mm-hmm. and so amazing, which brings mm-hmm. us to the question that we have on the Hope Have Come card of why is it that only Jesus can give us this mm-hmm. lasting peace regardless of our circumstances? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the peace that Christ brought was peace that with God that comes only from gaining right standing Mm -hmm. with God. I feel like um, Romans 5 verses 1 and 2 probably say it best. If I can read it for us, it says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that again. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by the faith and his grace in which we now stand. Hmm. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It is. And I I, I love that idea. When, when I think I, ha- I have peace, but it's it's solely based on what Christ has done because my, my eternity, my, my relationship with God isn't based on what I do, but it's based on what Christ has already done. And that does fill me with peace, mm-hmm. right? I'm, I'm not... I, I want to serve God. I want to be obedient to God and I want to, you know, give him fame. But um, at the end of the day, I'm not doing those because I'm trying to earn something. And there's peace in that. There's a weight off my shoulders. A hundred percent. And that's actually Mm -hmm. the second part of the question we have is, have you experienced this kind of peace? And I, you know, you're, you're speaking to it already. This Mm -hmm. idea that, I mean, I know I can experience this peace. I have experienced this peace because I know full well that I'll be spending eternity with God because of my faith in Christ. Mm. Like, th- to me, this is the hope that we get through the Christmas story. This is the reason why I celebrate Christmas and why it's one of my most favorite parts mm. of, of, of the Christmas uh, the, the Christmas story. It's one of my favorite parts of the time of year and, and being able to resonate on it. Because to me, the reason why we have peace, the reason why we have hope is because of the gift of Christ coming mm-hmm. and saving us. And we don't understand that until we understand um, the peace on earth that Jesus brought us. It's not just peace on earth, it's peace in our hearts. You know, Heather, thank you. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm so glad, truly, that in, in one of these, you know, 12 days journey through the Christmas story, that we focus just one day on peace. Mm-hmm. Because that is what Jesus brought, brought. right? And so I, I'm thankful for that. And I think what a fun day to be able to focus on that. Yeah. So that's great. So um, thank you for joining us today. You Again, you can download the Hope Has Come cards on our website in the Cara shop. And make sure you join us again tomorrow for day 10 as we continue in the Christmas story. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks for joining us. 